and welcome back well as you can see we've got project x aka our red ram sitting on our lift today and just kind of had it in here overnight just warming up so we can go underneath and get a little bit better view of kind of what, what we may have waiting for us as far as anything else you know besides what we've already identified um, from inside the vehicle now we know from earlier in the last video we were chasing down a water leak which we found and just give a little update it wasn't the new rear glass that was installed in this corner it's not this corner that's leaking it's actually coming from the high mounted stoplight or the third eye brake light however you want to call it chrysler calls that a high mounted stoplight or the satellite antenna on the roof of the vehicle as you can see we just took a little bit of tape while it was outside and taped up the edges of the light and the satellite receiver antenna on top because we noticed it was a little bit loose and when we did that we left the truck sitting outside for another couple of days we had another rainstorm and then one heck of a thunderstorm come through which we had sideways rain, high winds, you name it, and shoved a towel between the back seat and the back glass in this corner to see if it would get wet. And after taping up those two spots, again, that high mounted stoplight and that satellite receiver uh, antenna, uh, it stayed dry back here through the rest of that rain. Uh, and also over here, just get some light on the subject here. This is also now nice and dry as well, and it stayed dry through those rainstorms. So that definitively tells us, you know, along with our visible watermark that we have on the ceiling, that that water was definitely coming in, either that satellite receiver, that third eye brake light, perhaps both, and it was just kind of accumulating trailing down off this side and eventually dripping through the interior and that's what i was saying earlier uh, normally these third eye brake lights on these 1500s and even some of the 2500s to my understanding uh, they've got a tendency the older ones like to leak so we went ahead and ordered a new light assembly for the center <coughs> excuse me we ordered a new light assembly for the center we also ordered a new, went ahead and ordered a new uh, satellite receiver antenna for the top as well, just so that way we would get new gaskets with those assemblies. Well, let's get you in a situation that we can crawl underneath here. need to show you a couple of things that we discovered while working on this. Now, we knew this vehicle uh, had some histories of some accidents uh, in its previous life. And you can kind of see a little bit of that in the bumper. You can actually kind of see this end of the bumper is pushed in just a little bit more uh, than this end. And you can see it right there in that gap here versus how close that gap is there. So this has been pushed in a little bit. Which could mean that they just bent this bracket assembly here or it could mean that more than just that's bent yeah, it's probably just this bracket right here because you see all this metal scrapings right here where it's kind of scraped the paint off and and went down to the metal itself so chances are this bracket here has been bent up and probably in so along with potentially replacing the bumper uh, we may have to get that bracket as well and see if that'll correct the bumper but you know replacing the bumper is minor it looks like they did some towing on here because they do have the tow package on this and the result of this bumper being bent in could just be from they could have had a trailer strike when they were towing it I mean, I'm not, obviously, 
you know, we would only be able to see if the frame was bent, if it was really out of whack, because it's, you know, some pretty beefy frames uh, on these trucks. But, you know, the only way to tell for sure would be to get it onto an alignment rack or a frame rack and actually see. And, and to a degree, if you try to do an alignment on these, it'll kind of give you an indication of, you know, how things are looking. Uh, let's see. Okay, on to the next piece. And hopefully you can see that. But that should be the first thing you notice from the back. Look at the sway bar on the back of that diff. Or bolts to the, I should say, to the... Uh, rear diff or rear axle um, it's twisted like a pretzel <laughs> it should not have that bend in it and you can see it through here if you follow this piece is that it comes up goes down goes back down so it's it's took one heck of a wallop on this side in order to bend that and uh, chances are it probably took a hit either on this side through here or on that one through there and it just bent the crap out of that sway bar and you can not only can you just visibly see this bar's bent but you can see the bushings right there if you look at where the sway bar goes through the bushings you see that gap right there at the bottom of the bushing where it's, this bar has been bent upwards and it's pushing everything up so that would mean we would need a new new sway bar in the rear new sway bar bushings and the end links because these end links may be okay to save but you can see how they've been stressed out by this uh, sway bar link being bent or sway bar being bent so you might as well just go ahead and replace these while we're here uh, not to mention a lot of the aftermarket uh, sway bar links that you can get are, you know, more beefy, beefier than the OEM ones. So that's what we're looking at there is the rear sway bar. So they did something that took a massive hit to the rear of this thing. And something that would have, would have caused it to come up underneath and come into contact with this bar. Now, with that being said... It may not have been a collision that did this, and the reason why I say that is that the next thing that we noticed, let me see what you're seeing, there we go. Look at that rim. Look at that rim right through here where the light's at. Let me back up so you can get a better view of it. That rim is twisted like a pretzel on this side, and I'll give you a better view of it. You can actually see it better from outside the truck if you look downwards and how this tire is lined up to the front tire is lined up and you'll see a section of this tire that is kicked out and as this tire rolls you know you can see it kind of doing this not to mention this tire surprisingly holds a little bit of air for a little bit of time not too terribly long uh, it'll go it'll leak down by about a day but it, it, it will hold air long enough for you to at least move things around but again right there right where that bottom of that light is shining right through here the tip of the light that rim has been walloped in a pretty good bit and there's i don't see any other scrape marks where anybody came into contact with anything yeah, yeah, there's nothing else on the frame. There's nothing else in here. And I'll, I'll show you something else we discovered on the other side of where this, uh, where the shock is mounted, which I think, would le which leads me to believe that you can see some rust spots right here at the tip of the light. Let me see what you're seeing. There we go. This uh, sway bar. Once again, right here, let me get you in on that. You see some scrape, some rust. Uh, you can see where it used to, this part of the sway bar used to be pushed in a bit more and sit inside that bushing. And let's see, yeah, those links still, yeah, that link still looks straight. I don't see any other scrape marks, but I'll show you what else leads, leads us to think that 
it hit a ditch or something on this side of the sorry sorry for keep tapping the light it hit a ditch or something on this side of the truck and bent that bent that rim for that wheel bent this uh, sway bar and I'll, I'll show you that when we get around to the other side of this but the good news is so far I'm not seeing any other rust just like on our 09 that we got from auction I'm not seeing the bottom of the bed looking blown out yeah we know from the top of it it's got a couple of rust spots that are starting on it but nothing that's made it through the metal nothing wrong with the frame that you can see like the sides of the uh, the bed here look good yeah it's got some dirt and debris in it but uh, nothing rusted nothing rotted out like the corners right here where the rock guards are at aren't blown out no large signs of rust on any of the frame itself uh, just the normal surface rust on things like the exhaust system things of that nature but uh, let me crawl around to the side of the truck and get back underneath and we can kind of finish our tour and I'll show you the other side of the where the shock is mounted and kind of show you why I think it took a hit on the rear driver's side here okay let's see sorry for the camera work but i gotta crawl around but there's some more shots of the frame on the driver's side and as you can see yeah it's got you know some rust on it it's got a section that's just a nice little just a small scrape with a little bit of rust starting on it but other than that i mean everything else is clean body wise on this old girl to include the pinch weld Except for a little area right there as you can see where it's just kind of starting to rust but nothing blown out nothing major got another little another little crease another little rust spot starting right there but that's easily sanded down and hit with a little bit of paint we'll take care of that but like i was saying it's nothing nothing huge no big gaping holes look at that we know that from our 09 that's our stereotypical broken uh holder for our um, emergency brake cable we know what the fix for that is it's going to need a set of emergency brake cables and if you look at that shock right there the bottom half of that shock you can see this has all been hit up against something and pounded in all in through here so something tells me you can really see how bad that rim is bent from this angle you can kind of see where that tire is uh, is bulged out right there and kind of see how it really really bends in camera might not be be doing it justice but again took a massive hit here bent in the lower part of this shock bent the rim on this side so one of the items that we're going to have to look at, and you got some rust on the differential, but that's you know, perfectly normal. That's just surface level rust. One of the items that we're going to have to look into is did they bend the axle on this driver's side rear, or at least potentially did they bend the face of the axle on the driver's side, and possibly did they potentially bend the tube the axle tube uh, on this side. If they bent the tube, then this thing would need a whole new rear diff uh, assembly put into it. If they bent just the axle or the axle flange, then we can change an axle and, and consider it good. It's easy enough to, well, I shouldn't say easy enough, but we have testing methods that we'll go into where we can take this, basically this tire off uh, take off the rotor and the assembly bits and just kind of spin the rear axle and figure out whether it's you know completely out around or enough out around the spec to need to be replaced or if it's in fact just the rim 
Anyway, so if we're tallying things up, we knew that we were going to need rims and tires on this truck. And, you know, obviously seeing a really, really bent rim on this side, you know, definitively confirms that, you know, we're going to, again, we were going to replace the rims and tires anyway. We know that we're potentially going to need this shocks in the rear. We know that we're going to need brake, new brake cables. Uh, let's see, and we're also going to need that sway bar because it's bent like a pretzel. The sway bar end links and the sway bar bushings at a minimum just for the rear work that needs to be done. Now that's going to be on top of the normal preventative maintenance that we're going to be doing like we did on our 09 where we're going to be looking at just replacing all the brakes, you know, rotors, so on and so forth. And see these links right here, these massive links right here that you see that go from the frame that mount to the rear axle housing slash differential. These look straight. They don't look like they've been scraped or took took any kind of a beating at all. It literally looks like however they hit, uh, it just hit from here to the tire on this side of the driver. It looks like they probably ran into a ditch, but I don't know, whatever they did it, you know, as you can see here, they didn't hit any of the body. And all the body straight, so however they clipped it, they clipped just the tire and went from there, uh, which I guess is both good and bad. You can see the fuel tank didn't even take a hit. There's no scrapes, there's no dings, there's no divots, nothing, which is good. Now, another way that that rear bar could have gotten bent, that rear sway bar, and I'm not saying this happened, again, we weren't there, we don't know, is if this truck had an issue where maybe it crashed into a ditch or something along that nature, and in order to get it out someone may have hooked up a tow chain to that rear sway bar you know thinking it would handle the weight or maybe it was the only thing they could reach to hook up to and if they attempted to pull this truck out of the ditch via that rear sway bar yeah that that would have bent the that would have bent that thing like a pretzel because that sway bar would not be meant to pull the weight of this truck out of anything And sorry, I'm just working my way up to the to the front here. You know, I have to forgive the camera work. Here we go. So, gives you some shots of the motor there. Now the nice thing is we've got some stereotypical transmission pan leaks. But if you go into Dodge, especially a Dodge Ram or Dodge truck of any kind, transmission pan leaks are pretty much normal. Um, we had trans we had a little bit of a transmission pan leak on the 09. I've had transmission pan leaks on my 2500 with less than 20 something thousand miles on it. I had one that was seeping already. If you remember in that series of videos, we replaced it. So if we continue forward with this old girl, then uh, we'll be doing a complete transmission service as well as upgrading this to the same uh, deeper and thicker pan uh, to allow for better cooling like we did on our 2500 since we know that the end goal for this old girl at some point in time will be a built up supercharged 5.7 Hemi we're going to take precautions and help our transmission out a little bit let's see in case you're curious there's a tag for the transmission on the side and again, I'm not seeing any oil coming out from rear main, which is good. I'm not seeing any oil leaks across the oil pan. Let me, sorry, I'm resetting the display. Display in the GoPro's timeout to save battery, but I also use it to kind of see what you can see. So when the display times out, I have to touch it to wake it up. Now, I've seen a lot of dirt on the frame which could be exposing oil leaks, but the dirt is like dry dirt. 
it's not like a like a wet tight mud uh, so uh, that would tell me that what we got on here is just the same type of accumulation of fine dirt that we've had all over this truck kind of based on where it came from but again good thing is I'm not seeing any oil leaks I'm not seeing any coolant leaks no fuel leaks and so far underneath the only thing that looks like it's got maybe a little bit of leak to it is potentially just seeping out of the transmission pan here again which is it's normal okay now the other evidence here that uh, something hit is that let's see if I can crawl underneath here there we go you can see some scrape marks on the passenger side bottom of the shock right there and you can see a little bit of scrape marks on that lower control arm but nothing that looks you know alarming nothing that would appear to make it look like it's been bent or twisted it just means that they probably hit a curb or a speed bump or it could have been part of whatever happened in the rear to bend that rim now uh, we just have to be mindful of when we're working on this is that potentially if anything is bent you know is the lower control arm bent but bent in such a way we can't tell you know is the uh, yoke where the um, hub mounts the bearing hub mounts that you know that you ultimately uh, attach your tire to that yoke could be bent you know we just we don't know and it doesn't help that this is a completely mismatched rim and tire that was sent from the junkyard because the first tire was just completely shot and wouldn't hold air so they they sent that tire along with the record that dropped the truck off so we could at least roll the vehicle which which was nice of them they they didn't have to do it uh, let's see what else we got going on underneath here the good thing is like I said I'm not seeing a lot of frame rust she looks nice and clean it definitely does not look like a northern vehicle under here it definitely looks like it came from the area that exactly as uh, as it came out of it looks like it was there for the majority of its life if this were a northern vehicle and had even a couple couple of years and welcome back I apologize SD card filled up on us cut us off so I'm not sure where it left off so if this is a repeat I uh, apologize but you can see a little bit of scrape marks here underneath where the shock mounts a little bit of scraping on the control arm here uh, and again uh, we won't know if anything's bent in there as far as the arm or maybe the yoke on this side uh, until um, we get in here to kind of start surfs in this as we stated before that bearing hub uh, will need to be replaced uh, simply because whoever put the tire on the original factory tire on this thing or factory rim I should say uh, stripped out almost every lug on that and it tore the threads up us just getting those lug nuts off to put this temporary tire on which again the auction place sent with it you know, you know not sure how that happened but it seemed like somebody was having a hard time getting the lug nuts on that side and just you know put an impact on it and dro drove it home unfortunately oh well again we'll have to replace the bearing side on that one and when we do we'll need to inspect it and kind of see how these ball joints are hanging up and make sure that we don't have to replace you know any of those while we're here because uh, if we have to you know no better time to go ahead and replace those ball joints you know while we have the wheel and everything disassembled to put the hub on it now the nice thing is if you see here just as we were talking about before uh, this is a two-wheel drive 1500 so we don't have uh, the front diff and all that to deal with if you remember getting the oil pan off 
of the 2009 was a little bit of a pain because of the front diff and pulling the motor and putting the motor back in, although we did it. But you can kind of see here that all we got to do on this one is take this center bar out and we can drop that oil pan without having to, you know, jack up or jack up the trans, uh, jack up the engine, which is nice. So it'll make some operations a bit easier on this truck being only two wheel drive. Uh, but again, just to recap, good thing is not seeing any large amounts of rust. I'm not seeing any huge amounts of like strike damage other than again, just some scraping uh, on the bottom of the uh, shock mount there not seeing any huge amounts of obvious dings to the frame the frame is clean again looks very much like a northern type truck from the lack of amount of rust that's on her other than the stereotypical rust that you typically find on an exhaust or a drive shaft or the surface rust on the differential you know unprotected steel I guess I should say so anywhere that's where we set so where we set right now is that the motor runs uh, it does go into gear it does drive obviously but uh, we're gonna have to replace the third eye brake light and that satellite antenna uh, in order to make sure that the seals on those remain good and it no longer continues to leak inside the cab um, we need to get uh, the four rims and tires on here. Uh, we're going to have to evaluate uh, if the axle on the rear uh, driver's side back there is bent or not. Uh, the rear sway bar, sway bar bushings and sway bar end links will need to be replaced. And when we're doing the front hub over here, we're going to do the hub on the driver's side as well because I like to replace those hubs in pairs. You don't have to. That's just my preference. Sorry, I'm trying to get the screen to wake back up. There we go. Uh, and when we're in there kind of looking things over, we'll obviously we'll look in doing the normal brake service, which is going to be a new rotor, new pads, and then we'll... Uh, take a look at our ball joints upper and lower as well as our inner and outer tie rod ends and just verify how they look make sure that they don't need to be replaced while we're in there if they're good we'll leave them if they start to have any kind of play in them you know we'll look to get in getting them changed out so and then on the interior we're still looking to get a hold of possibly um another auction um ram that we could use for parts potentially one with a good interior that we can just strip the interior out of and if we can get some of the other bonus pieces that we need out of it uh to put towards this old girl the, you know that would be just a bonus at that point or if we can't find another ram to use as the parts ram then what we'll have to do at that point is either evaluate potentially just taking the upholstery down to be cleaned thoroughly cleaned and or just take them down to be reupholstered you know the like i said the interior carpet and a lot of the upholstery is is kind of turning itself around uh, now that we've gone through it and kind of gave it a, a thorough cleaning and uh, so we'll still have to evaluate what we want to do there but for the meantime we got a uh a bunch of stuff in the rear to evaluate and take care of and you know at this point in the project is when you start asking yourself questions uh, do you continue forward with it or do you cut your losses so to speak uh, maybe sell this maybe uh, you know turn it over to somebody that uh, that can does scrap for donation things of that nature um, and at this point, you know, that's kind of one of those decisions that if it's your project, at the end of the day, um, input from others is uh, greatly welcomed. Uh, but if you find yourself in that kind of a question, you, you kind of have to evaluate uh, your own input as well as others and determine if you want to proceed forward or not. 
and, and just in, at least in my opinion, and I welcome your opinions below, is that you've seen the damage we've got so far, you've seen the pieces that we have to replace, and in my opinion, the frame is good, or it looks good, it doesn't look bent, but again, with the caveat being, even if there was a bent frame, it may not be detectable to us at this point, until we try to get an alignment done on it, but seeing as there's no big gaping holes in the frame, no rust, it looks very much like a northern vehicle, the body's in good shape, again, there's a shot of the passenger side pinch welds. Even the pinch welds in the passenger side look good. There's where normally uh, your frame and bracketry would mount for your side steps. You can tell that even though the, the tape's been removed, the factory tape that would cover up those holes have been removed, it's still rust free. So in my opinion, at least for now, it is worth investing a little bit of money and a little bit of time into uh, to at least get the ball rolling and get things started and see about resurrecting this old girl and getting the problem areas fixed and uh, seeing about getting her back on the road full time uh, but again that's just kind of my opinion of it and uh, like I said we'll go from there but again I value your opinion uh, please feel free to kind of drop it in the comment box below and with that being said, I'm going to shut you off real quick. I'm going to go out. I'm going to show you some of the pieces that we have purchased for this truck already. And with that being said, one moment and bring you right back. I promised I wanted to. I said I wanted to show you this. I promised I would. This is that rear driver's side back tire that had that significant bend to it. Looks like it took a hit. And if you look at the, this rear tire in comparison to the front, you'll see the front kind of lines up between the rear, the rear, pass, a rear driver's side tire is in relation to the front driver's side tire. But as you come down, you can see that the lower part of that tire is kicked out significantly further than the front. Now again, that could just be the, the bend, the sheer amount of bend that's in that rim right now. Or it could be two things. It could be that the rim's bent and they possibly bent the flange on the axle, you know, which everything then bolts to, which would be throwing off the geometry. So again, that's why we have to get that tire off and kind of measure the run out or look at the run out in there. And if, it's, if the run out is obvious enough that we can see it with our eye when we spin it, then we'll have to replace the axle. Uh, if not, we'll have to get a dial caliper on it and just kind of measure the run out and see how far out of spec it might be. I'm hoping, really hoping, that that is just a whomped up rim and that's as far as that we need to take it. But again, just to kind of show that to you, you can kind of see it in that shot right there. If you look down, you can see that lower half of that tire as you get lower, you know, kicks out to the left. Okay, so one moment, bring you right back. And welcome back. So you may ask yourself, why is it uh, we, I started ordering parts for this before I did the complete evaluation. And to be honest with you, uh, I ordered some parts for this, knowing that there were issues that we'd have to fix. But if we weren't going to use them on this truck, then we could always hold on to them and, and use them on another one. Uh, but as um, as we're debating if we're, if we're going to move forward or not, just to kind of show you the items we were getting in that I was referring to earlier, is that there's your part number for you there. And what this is, this is the satellite uh, receiver antenna that goes on the hood, or at least on this, this model. Typically it will be located on the hood, and there's several different designs of it, but this is the one that covers at least this 2012. And reason why we ordered the whole new antenna it wasn't too terribly expensive even for an OEM part is that again it sits on the hood you can see that it comes with a new gasket there in the center and a new gasket that follows the perimeter I didn't see an option for getting just the gasket by itself it looks like it's kind of molded into one piece 
So that's why I went ahead and just got a whole new antenna. It may be leaking from that one. It may be leaking from the third eye brake light or both, but we're going to go ahead and replace them both. But again, that's the part number. Again, satellite antenna sits on top of the hood or sit, yeah, sits on top of the, um, uh, the cab hood. There's another part number for you. This is the high mounted brake light as Dodge calls it. Dodge slash Chrysler and or Ram called I should say Chrysler calls it. And if you remember when we did our 2009 we replaced its uh, third eye brake light with one that was actually meant for a, 25, a 2016 2500. Uh, this one I ordered in, it, it was it, it came up as a, a parts match for 2012, so this is the exact one that's on there now. The only difference being a new model obviously comes with a new seal, which is what we were looking for. Again, didn't see an option to get the seal separately. It may be available as a third party, but again, this assembly wasn't all that much just to get the whole unit. Uh, but... Uh, just an FYI on that one, if you remember when we did our 2009, again, we used an assembly from a 2016. So if you can't find the third eye brake light or the high mounted stoplight again, as Chrysler calls it, for the particular vintage year um, uh, RAM that you have, you may be able to pull it off the same generation, like 2500, uh, and it'll still fit. Okay, so let's get that guy off to the side. We'll show you the other little bits and pieces. I picked this up for when we finally do the engine reassembly just because the one in there is pretty cruddy. This is the one that goes between the um, uh, throttle body uh, intake port and the PCV connector at the top of the intake. In case you're curious what that part number is. There it is right there. Now we borrowed a couple of pieces off of this old girl uh, when we were doing our 2009. And you can see this is a just a third party retainer. But these are the retaining clips for the rear tail lights that go on the sides of the bed. So you've got two screws which are located on the side panel behind the tailgate. But you've also got two clips on the back of each one of those tail lights. And these are them. And we also picked up some replacements of these. And there's the part number there. What these are, you'll notice they're a really, really coarse uh, screw. And these are the ones, at least on this year 1500, that are used to secure the front grille in two places and they use four of these uh, total, two on each side uh, to secure the front headlights uh, to the uh, front of the truck as well. So we borrowed uh, four of these off of this truck to use on our 2009 and again we're just going to replace those when we build them up. So that's the only things that we've gotten in so far has been Again, that third eye brake light to help fix the water leak. A new satellite antenna to help fix the water leak. The screws that you see here and the clips that you see here. And again, this is just the um, pipe used to go between the throttle body uh, intake port and the PCV port on the top of the intake and we'll use that when we go to do the you know full-on engine refresh and assembly uh, provided that we don't find anything else uh, catastrophic enough to kind of stop us in our tracks but that's where it sits that's what we got right now uh, we want an overview of the additional damages that we found when we got this uh, girl up on the lift and we're finally able to kind of crawl up underneath and with that being said, I will let you go. I will bring you back for the next one. And with that being said, I always like to save this for the end of the video because I don't like asking at the beginning. 
is that if you hear and you haven't subscribed already, please consider to do so. It'd be very much appreciative. And with that being said, I'll bring you back for the next one. Thank you much. Bye.